The next submission is an oral presentation by the Sogain Ojibwe Nation as outlined in CMD 15H 2.118. I understand that Mr. Monem, Monem will make the presentation. Mr. Monem, the floor is yours. Good morning, Mr. President, uh, members of the Commission. My name is Alex Monum. I'm legal counsel for the Saugi and Ojibwe Nation. I'm joined today by Mr. Randall Coggy, uh, former chief of the Saugi and First Nation, and now counsel to SON. Also in attendance today is Chief Vern Root of Saugi, who opened these proceedings yesterday with a prayer. And we are also joined by a number of counselors from Saugi and Nawash. Uh, also with us is Dr. Steve Crawford, uh, who is here to answer questions as may be required. Uh, Dr. Crawford is a longtime technical advisor to SON and a sponsored faculty, SON sponsored faculty member at the University of Guelph. In our written submissions, we address a number of topics of importance to SON, its communities and its members, including the need for rigorous accident modeling that can credibly address community fears and concerns, the need for constant improvement in environmental protection through more stringent release limits, the need for full and effective sharing of information on key environmental protection and safety issues, the need for SON involvement in emergency planning to ensure such plans are tailored to the specific circumstances and needs of its communities, and the need for SON members to have opportunity to, opportunities to share in the benefits of the Bruce Nuclear Facility through employment, business, and training. We will not detail these submissions here, but they speak to a common and overriding objective, and that is to ensure that the SON communities can have confidence that the Bruce Nuclear Facility is being operated in the safest possible manner and regulated at the highest possible standard and further that SON is meaningfully involved in ongoing research and monitoring efforts, relevant planning exercises, and key decisions respecting the future development and evolution of the Bruce facility. This morning we'll focus our submissions on what has been a central matter of concern to SON over the last decades, and that is understanding and mitigating any impacts that the Bruce facility might have on Lake Huron and its ecology, and consequently the impacts the facility may have on SON's Aboriginal and treaty rights, including its established right to a commercial and sustenance fishery in the waters of Lake Huron and Georgian Bay. Here, and in our written submissions, we make a central observation that the understanding of the impacts of the facility on Lake Huron is an ongoing process of monitoring, research, and analysis. SON has had serious concerns with the completeness of our understanding of the impacts of the facility on the ecology of Lake Huron, and that there is now a significant amount of new data coming in that may aid us in filling these gaps. For this reason, we respectfully submit that the Commission should resist making any final determinations on the impacts of the facility or the mitigation measures that might be required, and rather should continue to require constantly improving monitoring and research efforts aimed at developing the best possible understanding of how this facility interacts with Lake Huron and require appropriate management measures to avoid and mitigate adverse impacts based on these findings. In our submissions, we further observe that DFO and the CNSC have recently initiated a regulatory process for the Bruce facility under Section 35 of the Fisheries Act that will require specific and comprehensive assessment of the impacts of that facility on the fish of Lake Huron. We appreciate that the current proceedings in the Fisheries Act authorization are two distinct processes. However, from SON's perspective, they also are complementary processes and may come to share common data, information, and analysis. 
For this reason, we have said that no decision in these proceedings ought to prejudge or any way limit the work that needs to take place as part of that Fisheries Act authorization. We understand this to be consistent with CNSC submissions that nothing in these proceedings will constrain the DFO in its ability to fulfill its responsibilities under the Fisheries Act. <coughs> Unfortunately, the submissions of the CNSC in these proceedings already raise a number of concerns about the upcoming Fisheries Act authorization process. Broadly speaking, our concerns relate to one, the process CNSC appears to be taking for its work, two, the scope of the review, and three, timing issues and how new and critical data will be considered. Many of these concerns apply both to the Fisheries Act authorization process as well as the ongoing task of assessing compliance with the EA conditions as part of this licensing process. I will briefly address these issues now. We have said in our submissions that the Fisheries Act authorization process must be robust, comprehensive, and credible, and that SON must be centrally involved. It is only through such a robust and comprehensive process that the Crown will be able to fully discharge its duty respecting a potential infringement of SON's proven right to a commercial and sustenance fishery in the waters of Lake Huron and Georgian Bay. The process must be based on sound, defensible science, credible and sufficient data. We must have a good process for sharing and assessing that data, including technical facilitation to ensure the efficient transfer of information and synthesis of analyses between the parties as well as their advisors. And the process must allow DFO and CNSC to understand the significance of the impacts of the facility to SON's Aboriginal fishery from the perspective of SON, its members and its harvesters. This must also include a credible per, per, uh, process to determine the sufficiency and appropriateness of proposed mitigation and offset measures. As indicated in our written submissions, SON and CNSC have already had preliminary engagement on this process and there appear to be many common ground, uh, much common ground including the need to hold a technical workshop to understand specific aspects of the work. There appears to be mutual agreement on the value of a technical facilitator. And there appears to be agreement on the need to understand and address SON's concerns uh, with respect to key aspects of existing data, including a report filed by SON-sponsored researchers at the University of Guelph respecting the methodology of the follow-up monitoring program. CNSC and SON have not yet fully agreed on all the steps of this process. The CNSC has provided us with a process map. To be clear, SON has not accepted that this process would be appropriate or sufficient given the nature of the authorization. However, we believe that a framework for appropriate engagement can be settled quickly between SON, CNSC and DFO through timely meetings and discussions. But in its most recent submissions, CNSC has made comment that raises concerns for SON about this process and how SON will be involved in that. In submissions filed by CNSC on April 7, 2015, and only received by SON very late last week, CNSC makes reference to a new updated Fisheries Act authorization application, which it received on March 31st of this year. That update, we are told, provides additional information specific to the quantification of fish loss as requested by the CNSC staff. Based on this new information, CNSC writes, quote, that CNSC staff reviewed the submission and conclude that Bruce Power's quantification of impacts due to impingement and entrainment through the operation of the facilities is acceptable to the CNSC staff. This is very difficult for SON to accept. SON has not yet seen the updated application from Bruce Power. We were not informed about CNSC's request to Bruce Power for further information. Nor do we know if this information request takes into account SON's concerns with the follow-up monitoring program that is ostensibly the source of this data. 
and about which SON has articulated deep technical concerns in a 2011 and 2012 report, which is detailed in, in our written submissions. We can assume that it, the request does not take this into consideration as CNSC and SON have not yet had opportunity to hold their technical workshop on the matter. Despite this, CNSC staff have already concluded without qualification and without obvious, um, an obvious line to addressing SON's concerns that the quantification of impacts in the application is acceptable. Further, CNSC states that the next step in their process is determine what, quote, offset measures will be implemented. This was reiterated and confirmed uh, yesterday in CNSC's oral presentation. By this, CNSC appears to have already concluded that it will not require consideration of mitigation measures as part of the Fisheries Act authorization process. This decision and approach appears to be inconsistent with DFO policy and guidance. I, I, I wish to refer to a, uh, the Fisheries Protection Policy Statement, and I apologize for not getting the, the Commission a copy, but if, if I can, I'd like to read a section. From page 10 of that, that statement on October 2013, quote, the Minister must consider whether measures and standards have been applied by proponents to avoid, mitigate, or offset serious harm to fish that results from their projects. The fundamentals of avoid, mitigate, and offset build on a hierarchy <clears throat> that is internationally recognized as best practice in reducing risks to biodiversity. This hierarchy emphasizes that efforts should be made to prevent, avoid, impacts first. When avoidance is not possible, then efforts must be made to minimize, mitigate, impacts caused by the project in question. After these actions, any residual impacts would normally require an authorization and should be addressed by offsetting. That statement goes on to describe mitigation as, quote, a measure to reduce the spatial scale duration or intensity of serious harm to fish that cannot be completely avoided. The best available mitigation measures or standards should be implemented by proponents as much as practically feasible, end quote. As said in our opening, the avoidance and mitigation of harm that the Bruce facility may cause to Lake Huron is a fundamental objective of SON. CNSC appears to have foregone any consideration of such mitigation measures and offers no analysis, justification, or rationale to support that decision. Another area of concern involves the appropriate scope of assessment under SIA and the Fisheries Act, specifically whether harm to fish should be assessed at the, quote, population level. We have raised similar issues many times before in respect to the follow-up monitoring program. However, CNSC seems to have imported the same problem into its proposed work under the Fisheries Act. CNSC has made constant, a consistent comment that under SIA, impacts to fish must be assessed at, a pop, at population levels, while under the Fisheries Act, impacts must be assessed at local levels. There are two potential problems with CNSC's characterization of the scope of review under both legislative schemes. One, CNSC's position again assumes that there's only one population for a given species against which impacts can be measured. SON has consistently taken the position that this is an unjustified assumption and that there can be no final determination of the significance of impacts of the facility on the lake until we have a far better understanding of fish populations in Lake Huron that currently exist, including the ability to describe and discriminate between multiple potential populations of fish. This concern applies equally to the assessments under SIA and the Fisheries Act. It is not clear to us how CNSC could assess significance of a, quote, localized effect to fish populations in the, in the vicinity of the facility without a broader understanding of the fish populations of Lake Huron and how fish local to the facility relate to those populations. <clears throat> How 
A second related point is that CNSC's comment that, quote, serious harm to fish under the Fisheries Act is a lower threshold and requires a consideration of local impacts, that that, that statement could be const construed to require only an assessment of local impacts rather than system-wide effects or significance. We do not suggest that this is CNSC's position, but the point must be clarified. The threshold of serious harm to fish assessed at the local level is only a trigger under the Fisheries Act for the requirement of an authorization under Section 35. Our understanding of the Act is that it requires a full description and assessment of the impacts of the facility on here, the Aboriginal fishery, and consideration of measures to address those impacts. It is not just an assessment of local effects. Again, we say these are the kinds of issues that need to be fully considered in a focused and credible way in the context of the upcoming Fisheries Act authorization process, and that we should do nothing now in the context of these proceedings that would narrow the scope of that assessment. Finally, I'd like to address a question of timing and how, the, how new and important information will be dealt with in the context of the ongoing assessment of compliance with EA and license conditions, as well as in the context of the Fisheries Act authorization. There, have been very, there has been a very significant amount of new data and analysis made available only in the last few months. For example, a Tier 2 preliminary quantitative risk assessment submitted by Bruce Power on January 30th 2015. The Environmental Assessment Information Report for Bruce Power released January 5, 2015, and an update to that report released February 27, 2015. Further, there is new and critical research and data that will be made available in the coming months and years, including ongoing results from the EA follow-up monitoring program, which is not scheduled to be completed until 2017 including new results from a modified entrainment and impingement program which collected data from 2013 and 2014 and which CNSC states it is only now analyzing. And there is research under the Collaborative Lake Whitefish Research Program, some of which we heard about this morning, as well as results from the University of Guelph team relating specifically to population discrimination and modeling. It goes without saying that these new data and analyses are essential to building our understanding of the impacts of the Bruce facility on the environment and ecology of Lake Huron. However, neither SON nor its technical advisors have yet had the opportunity to review or assess any of this new information. The SON communities have had no opportunity to learn about this new information or what it might say about the environment of their traditional territory. Yes, this new information must be incorporated into the ongoing assessment of compliance with the environmental, environmental monitoring requirements, but it also must now be brought into the Fisheries Act process. We have seen no explanation to date of how CNSC proposes to do this, and as evidenced by CNSC's recent expedited timelines, SON has a real concern that CNSC will not follow a process that will allow sufficient time for a careful and adaptable consideration of new data and research will not permit SON and its technical advisors sufficient time to fully and meaningfully engage in the process. It will not permit full and proper engagement between SON, Bruce Power, and Crown representatives. And most importantly, it will not permit SON communities and harvesters time to understand and contribute to the process. SON has been anxious to begin substantive work on the Fisheries Act authorization since its initial meeting with CNSC on the matter in February of 2014. We expected to have a draft from Bruce Power of the application in the fall of 2014, but as you know, the application was only submitted uh, in February of this year. SON and Bruce Power have entered into a protocol agreement to provide capacity and a forum for the parties to address regulatory matters relating to the Bruce facility. But only since the filing of the application has a work plan and capacity relating to this work been folded into the agreement. And only now is SON in a position to begin the substantive review 
of Bruce Power's draft application and to begin full technical engagement with Bruce Power, CNSC, and others on these matters. Yet despite this, CNSC appears to be pushing ahead to advanced stages of the Fisheries Act authorization process. These are matters of the utmost importance to SON and its members and will directly affect their ability to exercise their rights now and into the future. In the case of the Fisheries Act authorization, this will represent the first explicit authorization by the Crown of harm to fish in Lake Huron by the Bruce facility and consequently explicit authorization of potential impacts to a proven SON right. SON cannot accept a rushed or perfunctory determination in these matters. And SON expects that the concerns we've raised today will be addressed in a timely and appropriate way to ensure the ongoing protection of SON territory and its environment, as well as SON rights and interests throughout the territory. Those are my submissions and thank you for allowing me to go along. Thank you.